All right, I've been making a lot of videos lately about uh, all kinds of different stuff. Um, a pretty important topic, and then I'm just kind of throwing some other random stuff in there, like uh, uh, things I know how to do. I'm just passing on uh, some of that, uh, some of the stuff that I've learned in my life. And uh, one of the things that I, that you know, it's, it's come so naturally to me now that I didn't think of is uh, photography. You know, I've, I've had cameras since I was a little kid. I always taken photos, and then um, uh, as I was about to leave the uh, fire department in the Air Force, uh, they knew that I liked to take photos. I was doing some uh, uh, photos of models and uh, some skateboarding photos, product photography, stuff like that. And I was going to go try to do that and do this insurance thing at the same time, try to make all that work. But uh, uh, I ended up staying in I took their offer uh, they said I could be a photographer and they would send me to school to do that and I, I actually never ended up going to a legit photography school I ended up uh, going to multimedia illustrator school um, and did everything that has to do with graphic design multimedia illustration um, media projection stuff like that uh, all encompassing media and then I went into uh, videography after that. I was a videographer. It was my technical, you know, 3NO51, I believe, is the AFSC. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if I was a 5 level or 7 level when I left. I, I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, so I did uh, photography, video, and graphic design, website, stuff like that for the Air Force for about 10 years for the Air National Guard. Uh, and it wasn't a full-time position. It was a uh, one week in a month kind of position. But after 9/11 happened, uh, there were all kinds of orders that you could you could go on like extra hours that were available. Um, maybe like federally, yeah, yeah, the orders would be federally funded, um, and it's, you would uh, have like maybe 30 days of orders for a certain project that you could go and work on. And a lot of times I would just take the orders and I'd go out there and work two, three, four months at a time. Um, then we would have TDYs that we would go on that would be, you know, weeks or months. Um, they had deployments. I never actually got deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan. I went to uh, TDY to the United Arab Emirates, uh, but that was a, as a firefighter. And so, uh, but I, I did a lot of stuff. And uh, when I was a, uh, a journalist, uh, you know, not writing stunt type journalist, but uh, multimedia journalist. I saw a lot of interesting stuff. I did a lot of photography and a lot of videography. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and say I became a good photographer. You know, I've, I've shot <sighs> over a million photos. I mean, just pushing the button easily over a million photos in my life. And it's not, a, it's not a, about how many photos you take, but once you've taken that many, you, you just kind of get better. You know, anything you've done a million times, you get better at, I would hope. If not, you need to find a new hobby or a new profession. Um, so I guess I just want to go over some of the basics uh, of photography. And uh, the number one thing that uh, that you need to get over, I think, is you don't need a $40,000 Hasselblad with a digital back to shoot a magazine ad. Um, It'd be awesome to have one of those. That's like everybody's dream camera. I don't know, a lot of people's dream camera. I'm sure there's some different camera out now that's a dream camera. I'm not keeping up with the tech too much. I need a button in this pocket. Um, but you don't need some crazy expensive camera to get started to really uh, be a photographer. What you need is a base knowledge of your uh, camera and shooting on manual you don't want to just go around shooting on auto everywhere because you're just going to learn to trust that and you can't do that you need to learn your basics um, and you need to not look for a photography job necessarily because you're going to work up in end up working in a studio um, where they have the camera already set and they're going to say okay here's your job you sit here and you get the people to smile and you push the button and you don't really get time. Mean, this is in every studio. They, it varies. You know, some studios want to teach their their uh, photographers to be professional photographers eventually. Um, so uh, your your three basic things are your uh, your shutter speed, 
which is how fast your uh, shutter is going to blink, basically. And now, if, if this is for people that don't know anything, this is if you already know this, you know, uh, other video is for you. So your uh, shutter speed is uh, how fast the mechanism inside closes and opens. And it goes by uh, uh, fractions of a second. So if you're shooting something that is uh, moving really fast or there's a lot of light, you want to have a high shutter speed. If you're in a low light situation or um, uh, taking a portrait or something like that, uh, you're going to bump it down. Like say you um, shoot portraits at like 120, 160, something like that. Um, your aperture is how large the, let's see, did I finish everything about the uh, shutter speed? Uh, anyway, your shutter speed, that's what you're going to start with. You can start re researching uh, shutter speed, the first thing. Uh, your aperture is the second thing. And uh, I don't know why I have this thing sitting here. I, well, I'm going to be doing photos of hats and I was going to be doing my photos of hats while I was doing this, but basically it just turned out to be in the way. Great. Okay, so anyway, maybe I was hiding behind it. Uh, your aperture is the size of the hole, kind of like your eye when it dilates. Um, when there's m more light, your eye gets smaller. When there's less light, your eye gets bigger. Your pupil. Your aperture can be used for um, your lighting to let more light in, let less light in, and it can also be used for your depth of field. And what your depth of field is, uh, say if you have a focus point, say you want to focus on that, uh, no, say you want to focus on me. Actually, this is a good, uh, good example. This video currently has depth of field. That, these posters in the back, they're a little bit blurry, they're not really in focus. I'm in perfect focus, and it shows some depth between us. You can see kind of like a gap between me and that poster, those posters back there. So that has depth of field. You can use your aperture to change your depth of field. So with a, I hope I don't get this backwards, uh, because aperture is like, especially for dyslexic people, it's uh, it's it's backwards from what it what it says. So a smaller number is a larger aperture. Larger number, smaller aperture. Um, so here, basically, how how it goes is, um, the lower the number, the more of this depth of field you're going to get. Um, you can focus on a on a focus point, like say me, and then the background is going to be blurry. Or say you want to focus on this thing, and you want me to be blurry in the background. You're going to have a, uh, a low number on your aperture. Now, if you're shooting like a landscape, uh, you're outside taking a photo of five houses all in a row and you want them all to be in focus. You're going to put your aperture up um, as high as you can, usually without uh, cutting all the light out. So you just play with it a little bit back and forth. You know, you, you take several shots. It's digital. You don't have to. Um, waste film anymore uh, so set your aperture at like uh, go outside take a photo of uh, two or three houses in a row set your aperture at like uh, three if your cam if your lens goes that low then step up and progress through up to like 20 and then just check out all the different exposures and see how, how they vary and you'll start to get an idea and then you can change your sh shutter speed as well um, now your ISO is something that uh, has changed with digital cameras. Um, film, it was your film speed. So you'd go to the store and whatever speed you were going to be shooting, you would set your camera to that speed and you'd buy that film. So you'd buy like 100 film, 200 film, 400, 800, 1000, whatever, uh, color of black and white. And that's what you were shooting at. Now with the digital, uh, you have the option to basically go to the store and shop for every speed film right inside your camera. 
uh, you don't have to mess with that anymore. It's pretty cool. It's very cool because you can also use the ISO um, not just to shoot things that are moving at different rates, like uh, like a portrait. You know, your ISO might have uh, at like a hundred or two hundred. Nobody's moving. They're hold standing or holding still. You know, you're trying to take a photo of a rabbit running across a field. You're going to want to have like uh, an ISO at a thousand. Uh, but there are skateboarding, some jamming by. You want you want to set your ISO pretty high because they're moving fast. You want to capture that. But that also has to do with your your uh, shutter speed too. So uh, your shutter speed, your ISO, and uh, your aperture. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Are your three main things. Uh, your base. And again, you don't need a like a 20 megapixel camera if you're going to go out and just start shooting. Uh, this is the camera I have for my eBay store. It's a uh, what I for a lot of people call a prosumer camera. It's a Nikon D3400. It's um, it's a really great camera actually. I mean, it's nothing special compared to um, some of the options that are out there. This is just from basic camera from the uh, you know the big box store I believe this one was like four or five hundred dollars um, you know this is you can be a professional photographer with this I mean you, you don't really want to show up to a wedding with this or like at a really professional event I mean because it just kind of looks goofy you want something more professional you know but you really can do a lot with this you can shoot a 1080p high definition video you can uh, I believe this camera is like 14 megapixel. I have lost track because after after um, like 10 back in the day, it just kind of it doesn't matter anymore. I've shot I shot a full page ad in Skateboarder magazine with Ryan Johnson, uh, R Y A N Johnson, J O H N S O N, uh, for Skateboarder magazine. Uh, actually, it was for S1 helmets, and I had a Fuji S1 that was four megapixels. And I took that, I had no flash, it was an overcast day, which actually is perfect. I hope for overcast days when you go shoot. I took that camera out, no flash, no nothing, four megapixel camera, uh, got my shot, got a sequence, um, submitted the photo, it ended up being published in Skateboarder Magazine. Um, so, I mean, there you go right there, you don't need the craziest camera ever just to start out. You, you can get that eventually, um, you know, and then it's kind of like, uh, you, you just build, you just build on it as you, as you need it. Uh, this is just a basic lens. Now, I guess since I'm talking to, um, folks that are new to photography that are just kind of looking into this, uh, something I passed up, it's pretty important information is this is a, SLR or a DSLR uh, before it became digital it was just SLR so single lens reflex and that just has, that has I'm not going to explain the uh, science <laughs> of that because I'm sure I'll mess it up but when you ask for an SLR camera you look for an SLR camera it's it's going to be this kind of camera right here you have the body and you have your lens and you get a collection of different lenses from the wide angle to you know super zoom and uh, this is just a basic lens that comes with this camera. And it does just fine for what I'm doing for uh, just eBay photos, you know, end up getting really good photos. And I could use this for a, a magazine ad if I, if I needed to. Um, that's, I think I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video because uh, that's just the basic uh, foundation uh, for what you kind of need to get started. And um, I also have to go to the bathroom, so I'll talk to you later.